Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Encourage the Heart. My name is Tirza Watts. I'm the Director of Student Life and Campus Community at CU Denver. I wanna share with you a little bit about why we're doing these interviews. Um, and then I wanna introduce our guest today, Trevor Leslie. He'll tell you a little bit more about himself in a moment. The Student Life and Campus Community team is participating in this campaign called Cultivate What Matters. And we're doing that because we believe the best things in life are cultivated little by little. You have to take time to experience things and reflect on them. Our team comes to work every day focused on the mission of encouraging and equipping you as college students um, with the skills to cultivate what matters right where you're at right now. Because at the end of the day, this is really about you. Um, it's about your story, your hopes, your goals, and what fires you up. We can't wait to cheer you on in this journey of cultivating what it matters right now in your own life, right where you're at. So today my guest is Trevor Leslie. Trevor, will you introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us a little bit about you, what you're studying, et cetera. Okay, um, as you said, my name is Trevor. I am a peer advocate leader or a pal on campus. I'm also a new student orientation leader on campus. Um, and then I do some work um, about reproductive rights on campus as well. I am studying human development and family relations. Hopefully I'm gonna declare a minor in ethnic studies but I have not officially got there yet. Um, I am not from Colorado, I'm not a local. I actually, due to the situation that is causing us to record these interviews, I am um, back in Kansas City, Missouri right now with my parents, but hopefully I'll get back to Denver as soon as possible. Definitely miss it there. All right, well we miss you too, but glad to see you on screen today. So my first question for you um, is what's important to you right now? Um, right now, family, it's, I, part of the reason I came back was the idea of getting stuck in Colorado and my parents not having me here, just like the idea of me not being able to get back to them and them not being able to get to me. So, um, when this stuff kind of happened, I was like, all right, let's get back to my roots for a little bit and, you know, let's take this opportunity to put a pause on my Colorado life, but still continue it. I completely understand that. You know, um, I'm a lot older than you, obviously, but when 9-11 happened, um, I happened to be living with my parents because I was saving money to buy a house. Um, and I was in my 30s, but I'd come home for a year. And um, I was so happy when that national thing happened that I was with my family. So I'm kind of happy that you're in Kansas City. That's, that's good. All right, well, my next question is, you know, when we're in stress times, um, sometimes the silliest things make us laugh, but they can be an encouraging thing. What's making you laugh right now? Um, this is really goofy, but my hamster. So I, I've i never had a hamster before, um, and I just got him the week of Valentine's Day. And when I moved back, my stipulation was that I had to drive back because I needed to bring him with me. Absolutely. And my, like... As soon as I brought him in my house, my dad just started calling him rat and joking around and stuff like that. Well, I started putting him in his ball and letting him run around the house. And my parents love him. Like, dad is trying to figure out how to put a grid in the tank so that way, like, his tank stays cleaner. And, like, mom posted a video of him on her Facebook and stuff like that. So it's just so hilarious that, like, what's bringing us together right now is my hamster. I love it. What's your hamster's name? Um, so his name is Forrest Bo, but he goes by Bo, and it's the French spelling with an X at the end of it. He has an Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all watching. Look for Forrest Bo. Okay, so our next question. Tell, tell me a story about someone um, in your past who's been an encouraging person to you. Um, so as I was thinking about this story, I was really trying to figure out something that like was impactful to me, but also would be impactful to share with other people. Um, and because it's the spring semester, I just really started thinking about, I had an instructor last spring, um, and she was in human development, family relations, and she noticed that I was struggling and she just decided to like, we were going to meet on a weekly basis and grab coffee and she would do her homework and I would do my homework. And she was just focused on getting me through that semester. Um, and it, cause it was her last semester teaching on campus. And so she was really focused on like, if I have to leave this campus, I'm going to get you through this semester. So. That's awesome. Thank you. So if you could call that professor right now, what would you say to them? Um, she went on to get a master's, I believe. I don't know. Mm, that's probably wrong. But oh, okay. I, 
Um, I, she's doing a lot of research, so I definitely would call and like see how her research is going. I think um, that she inv invested like so much time into my life, like it would be a good chance to like just kind of figure out and be like, are you getting what you like wanted? Are you studying what you wanted? And all that type of stuff. And I would definitely um, try to fill her in and like talk about all the different roles and hats that I wear this year because so much has changed within the past year. Cool. I bet that would actually encourage her. So I want to challenge you to email her today if you can track her down. I have her number. I've like, I like pulled it up and I was like, no, nah. it's this whole like COVID thing. You start wanting to text people from your yes. past and you're debating and like, mm, should I really do this? <laughs> Why not? Send her a text today and just say, hey, I talked about you today and I just wanted to thank you and check in on you. Okay. So our next question is when you think about the last month, what have you learned about yourself? Um, I am super resilient. <laughs> Walking into the beginning of March, I was definitely super concerned. Um, I was struggling this semester to begin with, um, not including everything that like quickly started happening as the semester progressed. Yeah. So, um, just after everything, like within three days, I had packed up my apartment and moved back to my parents temporarily. And I had, um, I worked four jobs. So I had to like make the arrangements for all the jobs and stuff like that. And I have just really learned that like, if I got to do something, I can make it happen as fast as I need it to happen. And so it was a nice, like, little snippet into that strength that I think we all have inside of us that only comes out in times like this. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love that you have figured out resiliency and you can name it what it is and not only execute it, but really own it. Yeah. So if you were talking to somebody who was struggling right now, what kind of encouragement might you offer them? reframing uh reframing has got me through honestly 80 percent of everything that's ever happened to me but especially this situation because as much as like i want to focus on like the doom and gloom and like mm -hmm. kind of make be commit um comedically like melodramatic about everything because like <laughs> that's kind of where we're at right now but I, without this, I wouldn't have been able to come home and live with my parents for a while and see all of my old friends. Um, Hopefully from a distance. For, yeah, this was a way for me to like continue my life in Colorado, but still take a step back and get back to my roots. So I just, even watching the news and like seeing everything that happens, like there's these local businesses who are taking healthcare workers food at night or um like all the places who are like finding masks and sending them to people who need them and stuff like that i just rather than looking for the negative that's like constantly surrounding us this is just a great time to like see the sparks of humanity and the sparks of compassion and like let those be what light our way through this awesome thank you so one of the things we do in student life, and I know you've been on a training retreat with me before, you definitely have experienced this. We love to end experiences with the one word concept. And that's like reflecting on what are you thinking or feeling right, right now? What's one word that would represent that? And you can tell me about the word if you want, or just tell us the word. Um, resilience. I love how you mentioned that earlier. That has... Um, as a pal, I did a workshop with my students about resilience, and I think this is something that like college students don't hear enough of um life's gonna push pull you and stretch you and all that and all that matters is if you bounce back it doesn't matter like what way you get pulled or torn or whatever so long as you can bounce back and keep going like that's all that matters i did this really awesome workshop one year and i 10 on 10 encourage anyone who like has that like day-to-day -day doubt of like, oh, am I gonna be able to get through this situation? You either take a hair tie or a ponytail and you keep it on your wrist. And whenever you start feeling stressed, you just pull that and remind yourself like, hey, this isn't gonna snap. I'm not gonna snap. Right. And sometimes that pain of the, the rubber band hitting you makes you snap out of it too of, okay, take a deep breath. Yeah, resiliency. Okay, thanks for sharing that word with us. Yeah. Well, folks, that ends our um, Encouraging the Heart interview for today. Thank you, Trevor. It was great to talk to you and to see you. Um, and we want to thank everybody for joining us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, See You Denver Student Life. And we'll see you with another episode soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all.